this video, we'll take a look at some review questions uh, before we start talking about chapter three material. As always, feel free to pause, answer the question yourself uh, to make sure that you got it right. Uh, the first question over here is, what, which of these are not an electrical quantity? I know that charge is one, voltage is also an electrical quantity, as is power, and so is current, but time is not an electrical quantity. <clears throat> Next, uh, we are looking at this particular circuit and we are trying to answer which one is a, a, the, the dependent source type. So this voltage source is independent. There is a resistor here and here, but this one is a dependent source and it is dependent on uh, the current. So this one is a current controlled current source. This will indicate that it is current controlled and this the arrow indicates that it is a current source so the answer is again d in this case <clears throat> moving on uh, the reciprocal of a resistance is conductance and we know the units of that those are mo or siemens uh, also ohm inverse Next question, um, the, an electric heater draws 10 amps of current from a 120 volt line. It has to find the resistance. So this is just a simple application of Ohm's law. We find R by dividing V by I. And uh, 120 divided by 10 would give us 12 ohms. Next, the voltage drop across a 1.5 kilowatt toaster that draws 12 amps of current is this is going to be the power equation which is multiplication of the voltage across an element and the current through it we are given that <clears throat> the power is 1.5 times 10 to the 3 and we are also given current and we find voltage by just simply dividing the two and it should give us 125 volts Moving on, this is a, a, an interesting problem uh, and I want you guys to um, stay with me for this. We have a circuit which has one independent source, voltage source, three resistors, and then we also have a current controlled voltage source. So we have a current controlled voltage source over here. <clears throat> I sub delta is the current that is coming out of this voltage source and flowing through that particular 4 ohm resistor and that is essentially dictating what is the voltage of that dependent source. I H times I, A, I delta will give us that value. So I delta is simply coming from here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply my circuit analysis laws to find I delta because my question is how much power is being absorbed or consumed by the 12 ohm resistor now if i wanted to find the power absorbed again i have v times i i squared r or v squared divided by r as my three equations let me just write it down over here v i i squared r or v squared divided by r um, and since i know r already i can try to lean on these two um, so let's try to see if we can, if I can uh, simply do I squared R, uh, which in this case is going to be what? It's going to be 12 I squared. And let me name the current through that 12 ohm resistor over here. So I'll say that there is a current I sub delta flowing in this particular loop. And there is a, a different current, say I1, flowing through that particular loop. Right, so I've got current I sub delta flowing in this way and then I1 flowing in this way. Um, so this is going to be I1, right? So this is going to be I1 because I1 is the current going through that 12 ohm resistor. The next step I'm going to do is apply KVL for these two meshes. I'm going to get two equations, independent equations, and I'm going to solve them to find I delta or I1. In this case, I'm interested in I1. So let's see how that would look like. So I'm going to start with the left loop over here and apply KVL. I'm going to start at this point, go around the loop and come back to that point. 
So I'm going to get negative 20 plus the voltage across that 4 ohm resistor is going to be 4 times I sub delta plus this is interesting now I have the value of this resistor 8 but I do not know the current through it. Now since I'm going clockwise I know that the current through the 8 ohm resistor going down is I sub delta but going up in the opposite direction is I sub 1 which means the current actually clockwise is I sub delta minus I sub 1. I sub delta goes down, I sub 1 goes up, they are opposing each other. So the actual current through the 8 ohm resistor is I sub delta minus I sub 1. <clears throat> and that is going to give us, uh, the this, this is uh, KVL left loop. And algebraic sum of all the voltages in a loop it should equal 0. That's my first equation. Now if I started applying that the same thing to, to the second equation, I'm going to go from here and I'm going to come back over here and equate the voltages in that loop to be 0. If I do that, I'm going to get my second equation, say 8 times I1 minus I delta, exactly the same technique that I used earlier. I1 is going clockwise, I delta is going down plus 12 times I1, that's a voltage across, voltage drop across the 12 ohm resistor, minus 8 I delta, that is the voltage of that current controlled voltage source, equals 0. Then I'm simply using a minus sign over here because I'm assuming that I'm entering that negative terminal there. Now I've got these two equations, one for the left loop, one for the right loop, and I, the, I've got two unknowns, I1 and I sub delta. I'm going to use my... Uh, you know, uh, whatever tricks that you use to solve uh, a system of equations. Um, and if I do the math right, I'm going to get I1 to be 20 divided by 7 amps. And please check this uh, for the math. And once you get that, you just take that and substitute it over here to find out the power being absorbed by the 12 ohm resistor. Uh, let me write it. 12 ohm resistor to be uh, 12 I1 squared, I1 have already computed, so this should work out to be 97.96 watts. So I, I hope uh, you've gone through some good examples here. Uh, let's move on. Uh, we are asking a question here, which is what does this circuit do? So I've got some input and I'm measuring my output across this 8 ohm resistor. So what I'm treating is I'm treating sort of this particular part of the circuit as a as a system. Here is my input and here is my output and I'm saying, hey, what does that system do? Is it reducing the input? What is it doing to the input? How is the output related to the input? That's the question that we are trying to answer. So the first thing that I see is input voltage and the voltage across this resistor are going to be the same. I've got these two elements to be in parallel with each other voltage across elements that are in parallel is going to be the same. So V in should equal VR. That's the first thing that I'm able to write. Next, I've got this uh, current source. It's a voltage controlled current source over here. And the voltage V sub R is simply the voltage across this particular resistor. So I can compute the amount of current that is coming out of this. So if I label this current as say I1, I know that I1 is going to be 250 VR. And I know VR is V in, so this should be 250 times V in. And using Ohm's law, I will be able to write an equation that relates V out and V in. V out is simply going to be 8 times the current through that resistor, which is I1. So this will be 8 times 250 V in. This is going to be 2000 V in. So uh, really what we have is our output is becoming 2000 times larger in terms of the input voltage. So it's a voltage amplification circuit.
it's increasing the strength of the voltage by 2000 times that that that's what this circuit is doing moving on uh, we have got a few questions that are relevant uh, to the the newer material that we have seen this is based on kirchhoff's current law currents coming in should equal the currents going coming going out uh, let's see if we have two amps coming in four amps coming in 10 amps going out and some unknown i sub 0 going out and we are interested in finding the value of i0 so let's see if we can write kcl at that particular node say node a and you're writing kcl at node a let's do that quickly i've got currents coming in as two and four that should equal currents going out 10 amps plus i sub zero and i sub zero in this case should be uh, minus four amps so that gives me the answer as this guy next let's try to see in this circuit the circuit is over here uh, what is the value of v and v is the voltage across this resistor over here um, so i'm going to use kirchhoff's voltage law here so kirchhoff's voltage law there's only one loop involved i'm going to start here and then go around and and come back that way and i'm going to add up all the voltages and equate it to zero so i've got negative 12 plus 10 plus 8 minus v equals zero notice the polarity minus 12 plus 10 plus 8 minus v equals zero uh, so if I solve for this, I've got 18 minus 12, so we should be 6 volts. Um, just a quick note here, I should have probably used V sub 1 or V sub 2, something something other than V, uh, just so that we, we had those two uh, not to be, you know, conflicting. All right, we are done with this. Uh, we have this last question here. We have four circuits. That are shown um, they are not complete loops however the question is just about voltage between two points here so which of these circuits will give you voltage between two points a and b a is here b is here for all of them and i want that voltage to be seven volts so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go from a to b and i'm going to add up the voltages pay attention to the polarity and compute vab so for the first one let's say vab equals what so I've got from here minus 5 plus 3 plus 1. And that gives me negative 1 volt. Similarly, I'm going to do it for this guy. I've got 5, 3, 8 plus 1, 9. So 9 volts here between A and B. Uh, I've got minus 5 plus 3 minus 2 and minus three eventually so i know right away the answer is the last one but let's just check i've got five plus three eight minus one seven plus five plus three minus one equals seven so my answer is d here all right uh hope this helps i'll see you guys in the next video